Okay, so welcome to our class, our course of web and semantic web. And I will present to you now a summary of uh, what we will see in this course. Okay, so the basic idea is uh, these slides will show you the course structure. Uh, they will be available on the web, so you don't need to copy anything. You can just pay attention. Then I, I will put the PDF today on the web, so you can download it if you wish. But the things that I will present in these slides are also in our um, in our program. In the, in the program, all these topics are there. Okay, so you find them there. Okay. Okay, so uh, what we will talk in this course? What is the issues I will present here? Okay, this is in fact uh, a challenge because uh, web is becoming uh, is is let's say uh, the 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 researchers are looking on the web as a research subject. And organizing the things in the last years okay so web as a research subject is something new even though we do research on the web for several several years okay now people are organizing the ideas and looking on the web and thinking what is a research on the web what is a web science okay so the topic here will be I will try to in this course to organize the ideas around the web and the semantic web. So the basic idea is web is now becoming more and more important. If you think just in Brazil, I don't know if you know the ENCT, which are big research centers in Brazil that CNPq gives a lot of money to them to do research around some some topics. Okay, we have in Brazil two. ENCTs on web. So web is really an important subject on the research. Okay, and I think that it is important to have a discipline to organize the things and tell you what people what means web. So first, what is what means uh, what involves web? Okay, and what is uh, we are looking for in the web research. Okay, so we will start for the web foundations. Probably, probably you know most of the things I will present here. Okay, I will, be, I will do that quickly so you're not too bored with the things. I don't know if the. the <laughs> okay, but this is just the, the basic stuff. Okay. What's HTML and XML? But it's important. It's an important part of the course because I know that there are some details. For example, many people don't know exactly how to work with URI. For example, this is something that seems okay. It's just the thing that I type in the browser. Okay, it's not so simple. And for this reason. Uh, when I will follow evolving in the concepts, people are lost on the things. Okay, so I will do the basics. Tell what is HTML, XML. I will try to bring new things. Okay, so when I talk about HTML, I will talk about HTML5. Okay, the new things, the organization, how they are redesigning the things, how this will affect the web. And so on and so forth. Okay, so I will talk about XPath, XLink. I will talk a bit about a database perspective over the web. So XQuery, how you do querying. Okay, so we will learn how to do querying. We will compare the way of querying on the web and the classic way of doing that in, for example, relational databases. Okay, you can. You can stop me and ask me questions because I'm presenting here. Ah, I forgot something. Uh, today is the day in which we will uh, uh, you give me ideas. Okay, so it's much it's it's 
I try to bring things uh, 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 off web, okay? But I know that there are a lot of things that's outside because web is a huge topic, okay? So uh, you can you you uh, the idea is that you look on the things I I want to do here and you can give me suggestions, okay? So you can tell me, okay, Andrea, wh wh what about doing this or that, okay? Okay, so um, concerning this first subject, you will have a task, the first homework. Start working now, in the beginning, because I, I, I like to do hard things in the beginning because uh, then you have time to to take attention of hard things on the other classes because the other disciplines usually do things hard things in the end. So I do the hard things in the beginning. So the first task is an individual task. Okay, what do you do? Uh, okay, uh, if you go to my home page and click on the teaching. Okay, so this is the address you can see on the top. Let me do the following here because it's not capturing. Let me put on the capture screen here. Okay. Okay. So uh, here on top you see my the address of my home page. Okay. I forgot to put in the slide, but if you wish, I can do now. So if someone wants to enter in my home page, let me just put here a new slide. And do that. This is the address. I like to put the A, even though it removes it. But this is the address of my homepage. Okay. And uh, when you enter on my homepage, you see the link teaching here. Okay. Good. And you see here uh, web and semantic web, which is your discipline. Okay. And I started to put things here, okay? But the important thing is you have here Moodle assets, okay? Uh, everybody has an, uh, an area, eh, eh, everybody has the number you don't have yet. And you? Ah, you are regular. Just you is special, right? Okay, so... Uh, we must see if we can create uh, an account for you, uh, a special account for you here, okay? I think I can do that. I, I, I need to add, since you, we don't have too much people here, I can do that in the, in the end of the class. I can add you on the Moodle account here, so you can access it here, because here we will have, uh, we will have, uh, so here you put your login and password. Okay. I have a new password. I must I changed the password. I think it's this one. Let me see. Remember me? No, it's not this one. Ah, I changed it. Yeah, all secret. This is the most safe way to avoid the <laughs> digital hacking. Right? Okay, now I do. Is in, in on the paper and encrypted. So, okay. So, this is the this is the basic environment. So here you can see that I like dinosaurs. So there are some dinosaurs here. Okay. 
but here you see uh, uh, in in this environment you will see the homeworks that I put in the slides are also here okay and the description of the homework are also here okay what you need to do and in the first homework what do you do first you assess your Moodle account so let's try to do that today okay and you, you update your profile picture and personal data okay just to have your data there and then you create a profile page in the Mozilla web maker oh it's not visible the address here but the address is this one okay why in the Mozilla web maker Mozilla web maker is a project okay where you can freely uh, create pages okay oh you can do in your also in your server if you wish it doesn't matter for me for me it's the same this is just a, a easy way to create a, a freestyle uh, HTML page okay so if you enter here you will see uh, you do a login here for example okay I have my account okay error I don't know what's happening okay now it works so uh, for example if you have a Google account like me it uh, you can use your Google account to uh, to access your uh, Mozilla web maker account okay connection error blah 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 I don't know what's happening okay okay so when you enter in your account here you have uh, tools here okay and in these tools, I am particularly interested in the Timbo. Okay, so this Timbo guy here, uh, so this Timbo here, you can click here, and it opens for you. Um, a kind of uh, online editor okay when you can freely uh, edit your HTML page when it works of course okay so um, my suggestion of putting here, okay. So you 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 are free to to create your own page, okay. And when you publish, you put publish in the bottom there. It gives you an address, okay, of the page, of your page, okay. So um, the basic idea is you you create. A simple page, uh, and uh, I, I, I will explain you. This page is is not just to exercise HTML and these things, because this is easy. But the idea is this page will be ba a base of a project you will evolve when you transform it in a page that can be uh, automatically read. Uh, by the web using uh, semantic web standards so we will combine uh, information automatically on the page so this is the basis and we will progress in these pages adding things so I will show you how afterwards to create a machine readable page okay so how some machine can fetch your page and read the things and uh, find the things it needs and so on and so forth but in the beginning it's just a simple page. 
just this classic page that you put your name, your picture, hello, I'm here, and this stuff. Not, you don't need to use nothing special, okay? Just basic HTML, okay? So I don't know if, uh, the basic idea is, the, the page will, yeah, will have a picture, a name, a hometown, personal interests, research interests, and professional information if applicable. So if you are just a student, you don't need to put that, okay? So, and then you go to the, you get your URL and put on the, um, on the model, okay? So when, uh, in your profile, when you do your profile, you can you can tell what is your uh, so it, it's that is here something that you change your profile let me see my courses so this is my profile see change my profile so in your profile you will see that uh, there is a place where you put uh, your web page here okay so you 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 get the address you you got from the mozilla uh web maker and put here okay and that's it okay uh, it, it's not necessary to spend time with design and visual please don't do that just put the regular html with information with products doesn't matter okay we are not, uh, we are not uh, considering now design and so on. Everybody understood? Okay, so let's go ahead. So, this is the plugin. I tell you what's the web and the web foundations, HTML and HTML. And then comes the, the fun. Okay, this part is web science. And web science is a term, is, is a more or less new term. It's not something that we used in the past, okay? And web science is not doing science with the web. It's not that. So, okay? There is no, we are not talking about chemistry, biology, or nothing. Web science means... We do research about the web. So the web is the subject of our research. Okay? Got it? So we are, we, we are looking for what's the web, what's the, what's the things on the web, and so on and so forth. So this is one thing we will talk a lot. And what we will talk on the web science? Okay. So, uh, before I tell you, uh, so the first homework is for the next class, okay? In the Moodle, there is the date, okay? In the Moodle is the date here of the first homework, which is this one. Let me show you. Good. So the first homework is for uh, tw uh, 25 February, okay? You just update your profile and that's it with the thing that I told, okay? The second homework, which I will explain you now, is for the... Uh, you have one week, okay? So... Uh, it's uh, 27 is the day for the second homework. And what's the second homework? Okay. First, I, I, I'm still not sure that we will create groups. It depends on the size of the, the class. If we still have four members, uh, you can do that individually. Okay. But otherwise, we can do groups of uh, two members. Okay. 
And for the second homework, we will create two slides, only two. You cannot create more than two slides, okay? And in the first slide, uh, you put topics, bullets, uh, in which we will tell the challenges for the websites, okay? So if we are talking about websites, what the things we are looking for, what the things we are doing research, okay? And in the second slide, uh, you put what is the subject you select for your presentation. Because I will, I will tell you that this class will have two projects. You do two projects. The first project, you do a paper and a presentation. Okay? About this paper. And uh, you select the subject of your paper and presentation. So there is a paper also here. Okay, so it's not just the presentation, but the ah. Let me get the pen here. So first, no, not that. That. No. Go go go. Okay, so for the paper and presentation. Okay, so. No, is <laughs> hard to read, hard, right? So okay, for the paper and presentation uh, is the second slide. So you tell, okay, uh, considering these challenges, these topics, I selected this one for my paper and presentation. Okay, uh, and and you present these slides in the day 27 okay so in the day 27 you do that but how do you know which are the challenges for the cement for the web science so ah, okay when you do that you upload it on the Moodle okay so in the Moodle if you enter there it's already open you see here oh god Go ahead, go, go, go. What's happening? Okay. So you can see here that that is the, the place here to put the second homework here. A red open. So you just go there and upload it. Okay. What you upload there? The slides. Before the presentation. So when you arrive in the class, you already put, uploaded the slides. Okay. And uh, these two slides will be present by the members of the group. Okay? And how you do that? How do you, will you select? So you have two papers. These papers are on my web page. Okay? I see that you are already printed both. Yeah, okay. So these papers are the papers you read, and from these papers you extract these topics okay of, of course you can go and find other papers if you wish okay you can go there and find other topics but this is the papers that you must at least read these two papers okay and from these two papers you extract the topics and you select the topic you you uh, present in your uh, presentation here in your paper and presentation okay and uh, this is already part of the first project. So you are already being evaluated for this. Okay? Everybody understood? Okay. So coming back to the web science. When we talk about web science, and these two papers, they uh, discuss a lot of what is web science, what involves... Uh, uh, web science, okay. So uh, I tried to bring some interesting things we must uh, think when you see conferences and other things about web science. One thing is social web and social networks, okay. This is one hot topic. Uh, how uh, how the web uh, pr provides means to to put people together 
and how you produce things in these social networks uh, and how you can correlate things so uh, in related to these topics has for example taxonomies and emergent social structures okay so for example people interact people produce content and this content has relations okay not always explicit in most of the case implicit okay but as we have and this is fantastic we have millions or billions of relations and data and relations okay so algorithms that exploits these relations can give us a lot of information okay so there are uh, hundreds of researchers there uh, looking for for example can i produce knowledge from this data can i for example uh, deduce things about this data can i recommend things okay so I look on that and I can do some recommendation on that. Can I, for example, uh, relay things? Okay. So all these things now are possible because we have so much data that uh, we can apply statistical methods, for example, to uh, find relations, conclude things. We can have some certainty that this is, this is connected or not. And so on and so forth. I, I have research. I do research in this area. I will talk a bit, for example, in this area about graph databases. Graph databases are um, uh, an area in database that's growing a lot because uh, now we are looking for uh, connections. Connections is is the, the the subject. Okay. So if we see, for example, social networks. Okay. Most of the social networks are now being developed over graph databases. Facebook, for example, published its graph databases. And we have a lot of other things that um, Twitter and so on that are uh, producing uh, things over graph databases because they are much better to do relations, connections, and the things we want to do when we exploit the things. Okay? So this is one thing that we are uh, look. Uh, other thing is crowdsourcing. I don't know if everybody knows this term. What's crowdsourcing? You know that? You never heard crowdsourcing? No? Okay. So the basic idea is people likes to help. Something like that. Okay? People likes people like to participate. Okay, and sometimes uh, you can uh, exploit this uh, this engagement of people to produce interesting things. Okay, so one interesting example we can tell is a kind of um, a kind of originator of crowdsourcing is CAPTCHA. Do you know CAPTCHA? Everybody knows CAPTCHA. You know what the, how the CAPTCHA works? No? More or less? So the basic idea is uh, it shows you an image with distorted letters, okay? And you must tell what is these letters, right? Okay, so, but the guy, the guy that developed that, in fact, it gets um, Scanned images, so digital images with texts, okay? And there are parts of this image that uh, you are not sure that is these letters, okay? So you get this image that you are not sure what means and gives to hundreds or thousands of people the same image. And they will tell you, okay, this is that and that. So in some sense, people are translating the image for you. Okay, so this is the basic idea. Okay, but uh, this is one thing that people they even don't know that they are doing that. Okay, but in many cases, people want, for example, in science, we have uh, people participating 
observing the skies and uh, get information about the skies because you know I don't know if you know but uh, most of the, the new things on the sky are discovered by amateurs not by professionals and why is that because amateurs has time to look on the sky and the sky is almost uh, is almost infinite okay so you, you even though you have people looking on the skies they don't have time to look in all directions so the amateurs are looking in many directions and they find things okay so you can exploit all these things people doing things to help you to produce things okay you can extract things from the crowds okay there are people looking for content behavior and graph analysis okay so what is the thing okay so I want to look for example, uh, sentiment analysis is uh, an area that is is growing a lot. Okay, uh, and what is sentiment analysis? Okay, I want to see if people are liking my product. Just reading Twitter messages. Okay, so let's say I I I I, I am a big company. Okay, and I I don't have uh, time or people to read each Twitter because sometimes there are millions of Twitters about my products for minutes for example I don't know so I want to to have something that tells me uh, if people are liking my products to find what is the sentiment about the thing so or for example I am a president and I am I'm running for a re-election okay and I want to know what's the feeling of people about me but I want to know online not just two weeks after the message I want to know now what's happening but I cannot do that by using people it's too expensive but I can produce things that get messages for example from Twitter from Facebook or whatever and try to analyze the sentiment of these messages are they they are positive, they are negative, and so on and so forth. So, how can I do that automatically? Okay, this is sentiment analysis. Okay, people are liking this or not, or are feeling that or not, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, and we can do that. I can analyze content, uh, I can analyze uh, what we call behavior, behavioral analysis. And what is behavioral is how people behave when they interact on the web. Okay, it's not just the content, but it's, it's how well, how the paths they follow, how the the the, the places they they click or they do. So I can analyze the behavior to to get semantics and information. And there is graph analysis. The graph analysis, the idea is the following. Uh, uh, I want to find, for example, people that, uh, for example, in Twitter people do that. I want to find people that is inf influence people. Okay? So, uh, if this guy uh, sends some new or some, some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of message, Okay, or some kind of uh, uh, idea. How much people they, he, he, this guy will influence? Okay, but uh, I can analyze that based on the connections. So how many people subscribe this guy? But not just subscribe. How many people retweet these messages? Okay, so retweet means I am in some sense thinking this is important and I want to to forward the thing okay uh, and this is a, a hot topic even in sentiment analysis because okay you retweeted that but you can retweet because you don't like it or you can retweet because you like it okay and how I can know if you are retweeting because you like it or not automatically okay so this is 
a kind of mixture of the graph and the sentiment analysis. The graph is the idea of I look on the connections, I get all the things, okay? Uh, people following, head tweets, and so on and so forth. And I put in a graph, okay? And then I can run some algorithms to look on that and find things, okay? Uh, if I will talk about graphs and I will talk about uh, several new algorithms, okay? The, this idea of looking on graphs and on networks, there is an area uh, we call complex networks. And now I'm thinking that I will add complex networks here. And people from physics likes to do research a lot in complex networks, not just in the web. They look all the world as a complex network. So you just put in a, you think something as a graph, some real world problem as a graph, and then you apply graph algorithms, and then you find things you want. Okay? So uh, the basic idea is we now have a lot of graph algorithms, interesting graph algorithms, to analyze, for example, the relevance of one node. Okay, or the influence, or the we have a lot of things like that, and Google exploits this a lot. In fact, Google born because born because uh, it, it it think the pay, the famous I don't know if you know the page rank algorithm, but the famous page rank algorithm is a graph analysis that you do on the way that pages are linked. And how to know who is the most important page in some topic? Oh, you can just look how is the mo the page that uh, other pages are uh, pointing. So are these things we can exploit to find things in graph analysis? Okay. Okay. And that is digging the web. Digging the web is okay. The things are there. Okay, but they are not designed in the beginning to be um, to be queried or to be uh, assessed as I want. This is the basic idea. Okay, I want to get information on the web, extract things. So digging on the web involves information extraction, mining, searching, matching. Entity resolution. I don't know if you know what's entity resolution. You know that? You you heard about this this thing? Entity resolution. The basic idea is how can I know that two things are the same thing? Okay. So let's consider that I'm uh, I'm uh, digging on the web. I'm getting information. Okay. And uh, okay. Then I find two places that talk, okay, this is Andres and okay, and also this is Andres and okay. Now I want to know if both things are referring to me, or is just uh, two, na two equal names, but for two different persons, okay? So the idea of entity resolution is, I want to know if two references are, are for the same thing, just that. Okay, and this is highly important when we dig on the web because it's the base for match, for example. For example, how I can match things if I, I must know if they are talking about the same thing. Okay, and in the matching, also we have what we call uh, similarity and approximate matching. This is not exactly what you are looking for, but this is quite similar. And we are looked at the things that we got in the social networks. So we can get information on social networks that can guide us to, to find things that uh, are similar. Okay? And there is a deep web. The basic idea of deep web is reverse engineering. Okay, so deep web is reverse engineering. So what is the idea? Why I'm telling about reverse engineering? Because there are two way, two kinds of pages on the web. Pages produced by people, which is the pages we do, our my homepage, for example, 
okay? And there are pages produced by machines, right? So, if you enter, for example, in the Amazon page, okay, is a page produced by machines in the sense that there is a database with the books and the prices and the things, okay? And uh, the Amazon system gets this data from the database, transform them in HTML, and put on the web, okay? The problem is, I want to access Amazon information, okay? But for some reason, I don't have access to its database. I don't have straight access to the database. Okay? So, what I do? I will do a reverse engineering. I will read the pages and translate back to the database. So, this is the deep web. Okay? I will try to find the model behind the page and translate back to a database. Okay? Got it? You want to ask something? No? And then comes web engineering, okay, which has relations with uh, web science, has connections with web science, okay. But I like to talk this part of web engineering because we are looking for things like uh, the web platform and applications. Okay, so uh, in this topic, we are not, uh, uh, we are, uh, we have a different perspective. The perspective is, can I think the web as the platform, platform over which we will produce the applications of the future? Okay, so now, uh, people are thinking of web in the following way. Consider that the browser is your uh, is your hardware. <laughs> the browser is your um, platform. I I don't know what is below the browser. Okay, I don't know. Okay, so what I you do? I will produce everything from web to up, browser to up. Okay? I can change the machine, I can change the plot, the hardware, I can change everything. My application will follow running. Okay? And this is important. Why? First, I will show you that we can produce things independent of platform. That we run in every in every platform. So this is the first thing. The second thing is this is important for cloud computing, okay? In the cloud computing point of view, I am on top of a cloud. And what is a cloud? A cloud is an abstraction, okay? I don't know what is down. It's an abstraction. And which kind of abstraction? It's a web abstraction. I have the web now. So I don't access, for example, a hard drive. Because the hard drive is on the cloud. Okay? I don't access anymore things on my machine. So my machine disappears. Okay? And I have this abstraction, which is the cloud. So the basic idea of web platform is how can I think the programming, the systems, and everything from the browser to up? Okay? So then you have the language, you have the standards, you have the interface problems, accessibility, and so on and so forth. And in this place comes HTML5 and so on and so forth. Okay. And okay. And in the web platform, we have uh, web for mobiles, uh, web services, web of things. I don't know if you know what's web of things. Web of Things, you know this term? Web of Things is the basic idea is everything is on the web. My refrigerator, my microwave, everything, my microwave oven, everything is on the web. And, and, and in fact, this is the feature. We, have, I, we will have a web address for every device in our home. Every device. We will control everything by using web protocols, okay? So, 
your house is on the web. Okay, devices, um, small devices, TVs, uh, clocks, everything. So this is the web of things. People are looking for how can I manage all these things on the web. Okay. And just to remember that mobiles is a bunch of things that is hard to define. Okay. Is that? Okay. Then comes semantic web, which is the second part of the course, in which we are looking for the web, uh, the, the pile of things. Okay, so we have uh, standards, or we have the XML, we, which we studied in the first part of the course, and then we have language like RDF, we will talk about ontologies, logic, and so on and so forth. Okay. And in this second of part of the course, we will look under architecture, model standards and languages. So we will talk about RDF and WL, how to exploit them, how to use them. We will talk about web of data and metadata, how to query, how to do rules and reasoning and so on and so forth. So we will compare the classic web point of view with the new semantic web point of view, which is a web for machines. So the basic idea is, uh, I'm not looking for people uh, reading things on the web. It's not people anymore. It's machines talk with machines. Okay? And how can I design a web? And uh, you see that your project of, uh, that you start off your page on the web maker, will evolve it in a point that it will become machine readable. So we will put semantic web standards on it so in such a way that the machine can go there and do questions about you in your page okay so this is the basic idea here how can we do that how can we exploit it okay and we talk about linked data which is a kind of magic thing for my for me I work a lot in this area and you can do really wonderful things in the semantic, in the linked data. I don't know if you heard about linked data, okay? But it's the idea of how to link things, okay? Put things linked. And uh, in this topic, we will go back to the thing I told about graphs and how we can find semantics and things just looking on the graphs and so on and so forth here we can find a lot of information and connections and so on okay i will talk about data spaces okay which is a kind of uh, how to bring the idea of uh, linked data to local spaces so for example in your company can I link things? Can I integrate things in a linked data way? Which is much, uh, in some senses, is much uh, more efficient. And you can integrate several things in a much better way. So data spaces is a thing that is interesting. Then I will go to ontologies and talk about ontologies. What is the concept uh, of ontologies and how it is integrated in the semantic web point of view. And I will talk about the ontology spectrum, which goes from simple catalogs, thesaurus, taxonomies, and going formal and formal until we achieve the most formal expression of things. Okay? And how it is integrated on the semantic web, how we exploit ontologies to, to produce uh, readable pages that can be interpreted by machines. Okay, and whose semantics can be exchanged by machines. Okay, and I will talk about semantic web services. Okay, so uh, as you can see, what we will do here is an overview. Okay, I will not go deep in any of these topics. I will just go fast, showing you uh, the things people are looking for. And the idea is, in your presentation, you go deep in one topic. Can be one of these, can be one topic that you select. Okay? 
is for example if you are looking for accessibility and you think okay there is interesting things to look on that you can propose uh, a topic on this issue okay the basic idea is try to take advantage of this discipline to uh, do something in your research okay so if it's possible to integrate the things that you do you see here with the things you are working on your projects or you are thinking to work on your projects is a good idea okay so it's a kind of open discipline in which you can propose things and uh, we can go uh, the only thing is it must be have it must have web involved okay so i cannot uh, i cannot uh, change for a subject that that is not web involved but uh, as far as you have web involved we can afford several things on it okay this is for the first project this the second project will be much more a practical project and I'll talk about it, but uh, uh, we can also try to to integrate with what you have. Okay. Uh, I will show you now. Uh, let me show you. Talk a bit about the. So there is the plan. Okay. There is the plan, uh, the program of the course. Okay, so most of I, I put the PDF of it on the page. I didn't put yet, but uh, uh, but I put it. And uh, one thing is uh, how you be evaluated. Okay. It's not three to two, it's three to five, right? Ah, oh, thanks. Three, five, two. Okay. So, this is the summary, the program that I explained to you. Okay. And then there is this thing. So, you have two projects. Okay. Oh, there are things in Portuguese yet. Okay, so I I translate things, but uh, then uh, to get a you must have eight and a half or more to get B between eight and a half and seven and so on and so forth. Okay. And uh, we, I don't have dates yet. I will bring you dates in the next class, and we can discuss. Even because we have, I, I, I hope we have more people in the next week, or after the carnival, probably. I don't know. But let's, okay. Uh, and do you want to do some questions, suggestions? Hmm. Tests? No. No tests. The, the, the basic idea of this discipline is much more discussed and, uh, uh, and, and uh, exploit the research things. So you will write a, uh, a paper, okay, you will do a presentation of your work, it's much more research. It's not, I'm not considering, I don't think it's something uh, uh, useful. To do a test to know if you know the topics of the web and but it's just the idea is these discussions and so on. So the, the the practical project is will be also not so hard thing. It's just to you show that you understood the concept and you can in some sense of the articulate it. And uh, uh, I don't have the final version of the idea, but uh, uh, it you probably. I will probably have some uh, open space to suggestions. Okay, uh, I mean, can be 
in some sense integrated of things you are doing in your uh, research. Okay, so this is the basic idea. And do you want to suggest some topics? Machine learning. There are several professors here teaching machine learning. I'm not an expert in machine learning, but machine learning is highly used in uh, mainly in the mining things. The, blur, uh, the yes, is a growing area, right? In this topic here, a lot of people is doing machine learning, but also in the social things, there are people. When you think, when you look on the graphs, you can apply machine learning to find things, to recommend things, and so on, and so forth. But what more? Let me see if I missed it something. Okay, so uh, this is the license. Okay.